Am I the asshole for refusing to make a packed lunch for my sister-in-law even though we work together? I, 25 female, make my own lunch for work. My husband and I both meal prep and we get stuff ready in advance to make it less bothersome but also to help us balance stuff out. We each found lunch combos we love and that work for us throughout our workday. I work with my husband's sister, sister-in-law 37 female. She buys her lunch every day and only occasionally brought a packed lunch in. In the past she has expressed jealousy about my lunch and has commented that she'd be paying $20 to buy what I bring in. I pointed out to her once that she could always batch cook and meal prep and save herself money. But she was dismissive and told me it's easy for me to say because I don't have children, which is true. A couple of weeks back my sister-in-law approached me at lunch and asked me to give it to her. She told me she didn't have the money to pay for a lunch. I told her I couldn't just give her my lunch but offered to share a little. She then decided to tell me about her and her husband's money worries and how stressful it has been for them. She then told me I should help her and make her a packed lunch for work since we're in the same office. I was really shocked she was basically telling me I had to feed her, and for free, every day at work. I told her I wasn't going to do that and I was sorry they were struggling. My husband was equally as shocked when I got home and told him. He told me to ignore her and she can figure it out. But she brought it up repeatedly that week and then last week she brought nothing in, including no money, so she had no food for lunch and I refused to share with her again or make lunch for her. This led to her complaining outside of work about how much of a bitch I am. My husband called her entitled and told her to go make her own damn lunch instead of demanding things from me. She told me I was acting like a food snob hoarding my precious lunches when it would be so generous and good-natured of me to feed her too. Am I the asshole? My guess is the brother-in-law had a come-to-Jesus meeting with the sister-in-law about how much she was spending on lunches $20 per day 5 days a week is $100. He most likely told her she couldn't spend that kind of money anymore because of their financial situation. Rather than pull up her big girl panties and alter her behavior i.e. meal prep, she decided to become a pariah and try to guilt off into doing it for her. Pure guess on my part based on OP's description of sister-in-law's behavior. Op is not the asshole, but the sister-in-law needs to buckle up because her buttercup world is going to be continually rocked if she keeps up. What the what? She wanted you to just give her your own lunch and go hungry yourself? That is such bizarre behavior it's hard to believe. Seems like her strategy was, first demand something so floridly unreasonable, that when you climb down to, okay, then you should make and bring in lunch for me, every day, at your own expense, when you make your own, you'll be overjoyed at the comparative reasonableness of this, unreasonable, demand. She sounds ridiculous but it would be very generous and, checks notes, good natured of you to post your packed lunch ideas right here. Not the asshole. I'm so baffled by the way these entitled people operate. I don't know how your relationship is with your sister-in-law in general but I bet if she had had a calm chat with you in an appropriate moment, read, not at work FFS, and said she was struggling so much and whether it would be possible for you to prepare more of the same thing you were making anyways if she paid for her share of the groceries because she just didn't have the time you might have said yes once or twice a week sure you can. Focus being might. You still would not have to have helped at all but you might have chosen to. This way there is no way on earth I would consider it at all. What's wrong with her? Glad to see your husband is on your side though. What the fuck? Of course you don't owe her food or preparation thereof. What is wrong with this woman? If she has kids, what does she do about their lunches? No, you don't owe your husband's sister food. No, you don't owe a coworker food. In both cases, that person is way over the line to demand it of you. Even with am I the asshole, where a lot is often left out. I can't think of anything that could have been left out that would change this at all. Not the asshole and let your husband deal with his family. If it's a problem at work, take it to HR after firmly telling her no and not to bring it up again. She's harassing you, and I presume only you and not other colleagues. I'd love to know what you take for your packed lunches. I feel like I'm in a rut with what I currently take. ETA, not the asshole of course. In no way. Not the asshole. Loaf of bread, peanut butter, jelly, and a banana. There is a solid lunch for her. I eat that five days a week. Am I the asshole for leaving my husband at home with our kids after he blew off our anniversary? I, 37F, am married tro, 
38 M. Our 10-year anniversary was last Friday. I took the day off of work to hopefully spend time with him, but it didn't happen. I knew my husband had the day off too, since he had taken call the day before. On our anniversary, when I woke up, I saw my gift on my end table. It wasn't wrapped, but I really did like the gift, so I didn't take issue. After I dropped our kids, 8M, 7F, off at the bus stop, I went home and made him breakfast. I brought it to him in bed, and he was still sleeping. No problem, I just ate it. My husband woke up at around 9, said, happy anniversary, went downstairs, and made himself breakfast. I asked if he had any plans for the day, and he said, to relax. I wanted to maybe go to a restaurant, or see a movie, or at least do something together, just me and him, and he said no. By then, I was a bit disheartened but I took his answer. About 20 minutes later, I just dress up and head out with a warning about right then. I just treated myself to the spa, shopping, and stuff like that. When I got back, six-ish, he was with our kids and by the time they went to bed, he brought up the fact that I left, and asked why I did so. I told him it was because I wasn't just going to do nothing all day because he wanted to, and that he didn't even care enough to spend time with me, so it wouldn't be an issue that I spent time alone. He went quiet after that, and while we've talked over it since then, I'm posting here to see if my past actions were asshole-like or not. Am I the asshole? Esh. Your husband is an asshole for saying no when you asked him to do something and you're an asshole for a few reasons where was his gift? Did you get him one? If you made him breakfast while he was sleeping and then ate it, he made his breakfast, that's not a point for you. You didn't communicate at all. You left him on your anniversary alone, if spending time together was really what you were after, you could have done that. You wanted to be spoiled, pampered. This post comes across very. It's my husband's job to plan our anniversary and it's my job to enjoy it. Esh. Him for blowing off your anniversary and you because you didn't communicate with your spouse about leaving. I don't understand all these married couples on Reddit who don't talk. I'd say you are the asshole. The question is what did you do for him for your anniversary? Was it talked about prior that you wanted to go do something? It's his anniversary too. He wanted to stay at home, you wanted to go out for dinner. He got you a gift and acknowledged the anniversary. There's so many compromises. DoorDash some orange juice, champagne, and a pile of food from some nice restaurant and spend the day relaxing and watching movies together, or doing whatever you two like doing together. You're the one who removed yourself from your anniversary. YTA. Your husband was on call the day before. I am assuming medicine. Call blows. The next day all I want to do is rest. You didn't plan anything for him, or with him but expected him to pamper you. Then you just left. This is toxic. I don't understand why you didn't make plans together beforehand, if celebrating was important to you. Also, you, left him with the kids. Where would the kids have been if you and he had gone out? He bought you a gift and you don't mention getting one for him, just making breakfast and then eating it yourself and letting him make his own when he woke up. You didn't do anything terrible, but a mild you are the asshole because you seem to not have communicated with him or considered what he might want for your anniversary which, after all, is about both of you. You are the asshole. Do you know how to communicate? You're a big girl use your words. You literally did nothing for him lmao. Made breakfast, didn't wake him and ate it yourself. No mention of gifts or cards from you. Incredible lady. Am I the asshole for telling my friend she needs to be more comfortable around other people's bodies? I, 18F, live with my flatmate, Ella. Our flat has two bedrooms, but the ceiling of her room collapsed a couple days ago. She was not there at the time, thank God. And I have a double bed so she's been sleeping in my room until it's successfully mended which, knowing our landlord, will be at the last possible moment. Yesterday evening, I got changed to go to bed. Ella was in the room, at my desk doing some revision, but I didn't really think that it would impact her. I did say that I was going to get changed and she didn't seem to care. I don't wear a bra to sleep so I took it off before putting on my pajama shirt. My bare chest was visible for maybe 10 seconds at most, and she screamed and accused me of flashing her. I kind of laughed at her response because it was unexpected, and asked her why this was so dramatic. She said it was really inappropriate for me to be topless around someone else, and that she couldn't believe I had been so disrespectful. It's probably cultural differences I live in the UK, 
but until I was 13 I lived in the Netherlands, and there the human form is not kept secret or demonized. I've seen my family members naked and I'm not uncomfortable around bodies we all have one, after all. I apologized, but said that I didn't understand why it was disrespectful as it's not as if I was doing anything sexual. It was a genuine question, but she just said I was being, unbelievable. I said that it seems to me that she just needs to be more comfortable around bodies, because they're not inherently sexual or inappropriate. She accused me of being, perverse, and of, forcing, myself upon her. I am a lesbian, so she could think that I fancy her, for the record, I do not, or be uncomfortable with sharing a bed. She didn't explicitly say any of this, but again I am autistic so she could have said it just indirectly, and then me getting changed in front of her could have been the last straw. Not the asshole. You warned her that you were changing, if she cared she should have looked away. It doesn't count as flashing, when there's a warning and you're in your own damn bedroom. If you were prancing around the whole house nude it would be one thing, but changing into PJS? Yeah, she needs to pull the tree out of her ass and chill. Not the asshole. Considering you told her you were going to change and you share a room I don't think you're in the wrong. Unfortunately because you are a lesbian. DWI am too. She probably does think you were trying to be perverse and flash her. I doubt the reaction would be the same if you were straight. I'd recommend going forward you ask her to look away or close her eyes so you can change real quick. Not the asshole. You warned her that you were going to get changed. She could have just looked away. Bodies aren't inherently sexual, as you said, and Ella's reasoning sounds homophobic. Info. The last straw comment has me asking has anything else happened? Not the asshole. Your bedroom. You're allowed to get dressed, undressed there. Ella can go sleep on the couch if she is frightened by the fleeting sight of a bare chest. USA female here I've changed W my friends in the same room since I was like 14. But then again, she may have never had a friendship like that. As I do agree, it's not a big deal, and she overreacted, and should NT have came at you like that. Maybe she was in shock and again, has never had this happen before so she's uncomfortable. I guess next time turn around and change? That's my only solution honestly, it's not like one of you is male and the other female. This is normal, W girls but normal isn't always normal to others. I really don't know how to judge. Am I the asshole for refusing to share my pen name with my family? Throw away for obvious reasons. I, F32, wrote a book during COVID that ultimately got published, and is doing okay. Nothing life-changing monetarily, I won't be quitting my day job, but it's something I'm proud of that I never thought I'd accomplish. I published the book under a pen name. My fiancé, his mom, and my best friend have all read the book with my permission but no one else knows it's my work. My family, parents and older brother, know that I published a book, but I have not shared the title or my pen name with them. They've pushed for the information, but I told them I want to keep it a secret in case I want to write more books under that name. I told them I want to be able to write without thinking. What will mom think when she reads XYZ? They never truly accepted this, and it comes up at every family event. Recently we were together for dinner, and the topic came up again. I wasn't in the best mood and we'd all had a couple drinks, and my brother had been acting like an ass because his wife wasn't there to rein him in. I admitted that the real reason why I wouldn't let them read my book was because, when I first tried keeping a diary when I was 6 or 7, my brother, then 9 or 10, would search my room for my diary, find it, and read it. He would mock me for what I'd written. If his name was mentioned, he would get a black marker and scribble it out. When I went to my parents in tears, they told me it was my fault for writing about him, and he had a right to read it. They did buy me one of those diaries with a lock for Christmas that year, but then he'd just pick the lock or I'd catch him prying the book open, and he'd never even get reprimanded. I was treated like a nuisance and a tattletale for bringing it to their attention because he was their precious firstborn prince. He would be emboldened and would continue to torment me. I stopped keeping diaries because it wasn't worth giving him ammunition. They blew up when I revealed this and told me I was being a baby and needed to get over it, and it never even was a big deal. I told them that it basically gave me a complex where I'm overly protective of my writing, and I have a hard time sharing it because I feel like I'm going to be mocked and ridiculed for it. They told me I was being so dramatic and that I always do this. Am I the asshole for refusing to share my pen name with them? 
Edit to add. Thank you for the kind comments. Some people have asked for the title of my book, but I really don't feel comfortable doing so, especially since this has gotten way more attention than I anticipated. I appreciate the love and support less than three. Not the asshole. And I would go one step further, I wrote about you bro and I don't want you scribbling out your name in my book. Not the asshole. They told me I was being so dramatic and that I always do this. If you think I always do this, it's because you always react like this. Your family has shown a consistent disrespect of you and your writing. Do not give them your pen name. You'll be happier keeping it from them. Not the asshole. So they mocked and ridiculed you for your fear that they would mock and ridicule you, because they have previously mocked and ridiculed you. Stick to your guns. If they press it, tell them they are in time out. Not the asshole. Another author here who made the mistake of telling her family. I cannot write a book without thinking, what would so and so think? I also have to deal with their comments about too much this or that whenever I publish as well. My mom tells me I swear too much, which I actually use less swear words for my genre than the market generally follows. As a creative person, there is nothing worse than having to worry or tone down your project for someone else. It also builds resentment and I started to hate writing after a time. I had to take a break for a while. First, congrats on getting a book published clapping hands light skin tone clapping hands light skin tone clapping hands light skin tone. It's one of my dream to get it done crossed fingers light skin tone. I was going to write you are the asshole because I feel like you could share at least the book name so they can read it. Then I read the rest of the story and it's certainly not the asshole, unlike your brother at the time and your parents now, the asshole for sure. Not the asshole. At first this sounded like you were being a bit overzealous with your privacy, but after reading that your parents actually condoned your brother reading your diary my opinion changed quickly. Fuck that noise. They can kick rocks.